understanding the formulae, which would mean how we are going to use these formulae in simple examples. So, let's see this. The first one we have here is 4x raised to minus 1 by 4 is expressed as what? Now, there is nothing going to happen to this 4. x raised to minus 1 by 4. Remember the rule a raised to x raised to minus a is 1 upon x raised to a. So, 4x raised to minus 1 by 4 is nothing but 4 upon x raised to 1 by 4, which can be even written as 4 upon 4th root of x. Right? So, we are using actually two rules here, a combination of two rules. One is a x raised to minus a is 1 upon x raised to a and also we are using the rule that x raised to 1 by n is the same as nth root of x. So, the answer among these is definitely nonsense because as I told earlier, there is 4 is going to remain as 4 raised to 1. Remember, this is 4 raised to 1 into x raised to minus 1 by 4. So, 4 is going to remain as it is. x raised to minus 1 by 4 would go to the denominator and turn it x raised to 1 by 4. So, among these, this is the right answer. And yes, that's the right answer. A simple application of how we can com combine a couple of rules. Now, let's see the next one. The value of 8 raised to 1 by 3 is what among these? Now, we are going to use the rule that x raised to 1 by n is the same as nth root of x. So, we have 8 raised to 1 by 3 can be written as cube root of 8, which is the same as 2. There is more interesting way of doing it. 8 can be written as 2 cube and the whole raised to 1 by 3. So, we are trying to check how well we can apply. We are using various rules. Now, we are using the rule power of power rules. So, it's 8 is written as 2 q, the whole raised to 1 by 3. Now, we know that a raised to m, the whole raised to n is a raised to m n. So, it's 2 raised to 3 into 1 by 3, which is the same as 2 raised to 1, which is also 2. So, if you use the root rule, you're getting it as 2 and you're using the indices that is a power of power rule and you're multiplying the indices and you're getting it as 2. So, the answer among this is 2. Yes, and yes, we do have it as 2. Let's check the next simple example. Okay, so here we have the value of 2 into 32 raised to 1 by 5. Now, 2 is going to remain as it is. It's a prime factor, prime number, 32 can be either written as 5th root of 32 or we know that 32 is 2 raised to 5. So, it's 2 raised to 5. 32 has been written since it was in bracket. 2 raised to 5 goes in bracket. Raised to 1 by 5. So, we again use power of power rule. So, we write it as 2 into 2 raised to 5 into 1 by 5 which is 2 into 2 which is the same as 4. So, among these, this is the right answer. So, simply we are combining a couple of rules over here. Right? And yes, we do have the answer as 4. Let's check the next simple problem. So, here we have 8 by 27, the whole raised to 1 by 3. Now, this would mean that this is 8 by 27 the whole raised to 1 by 3. Now, how do we do this? This would mean we are also using one simple rule that when you divide x by y, the whole raised to m is x raised to. So, you are doing the rule also a simple rule that x by y, the whole raised to m is x raised to m upon y raised to m. You are distributing the power. Different bases and a common power. So, we have it. So, this would mean this is 8 raised to 1 by 3 upon 27 raised to 1 by 3. In simple words, either you can write it as 2 raised to 3 and power of power rules and since, or else since their numbers are simple, we can write this as cube root of 8 upon cube root of 27 which is the same as 2 by 3. The other way as we did, we can write it as 2 cube the whole raised to 1 by 3 upon 3 cube the whole raised to 1 by 3 which eventually 3 into 1 by 3 so that will also turn out to be 2 by 3. So, either ways you do it this way 
or this way you're going to get it as 2 by 3. So ultimately in simple words it means cube root of 8 cube root the whole of 8 by 27 is the same as cube root of 8 upon cube root of 27 which is the same as 2 by 3. So among these the answer is definitely going to be 2 by 3 and yes we can check it. And from here we move on to the next one. We have 2 into 256 raised to minus 1 by 8. So here we have two laws we apply. One is x raised to minus 8, 1 upon x raised to 8 and then we are going to find the 8th root of 256. 2 is going to remain as 2 raised to 1. Right. So we know this is 2 raised to 1. Now 256 raised to minus 1 by 8. Now this could be a big number. So how do we actually know? Now actually it is 2 raised to 8 but from the exam point of view how do you do? You just take your calculator and take 2 and keep multiplying it. Keep account on the number of times it's multiplied. So it's going to multiply it 8 times gives you 256. So we are using the basic concept of indices that 2 into 2 into 2 into 2. How many times will indicate 256. So it's going to be shown on the screen in any case of a calculator. So you come to know 2, you are multiplying it with it 8 times and you are getting 256. Obviously it is a power of 8 suppose. So now, here it is 2 raised to 8, the whole raised to minus 1 by 8. So 256 has been written as 2 raised to 8. Now this is going to remain as 2 into 2 raised to 8 into minus 1 by 8. So using a raised to m, the whole raised to m is a raised to m into m. So this turns out to be 2 into 2 raised to minus 1. Now again, here we are writing it as 2 into 2 raised to minus 1 is 1 upon 2 raised to 1. Using the rule x raised to minus a is 1 upon x raised to a. This is the same as 2 upon 2 is 1. So the answer is 1 and yes we do have the answer is 1. So these were a few simple applications of things we have of a lot the laws of indices a few more simple problems where we could possibly use it. Now it's asked over here 2 raised to half into 4 raised to 3 by 4 is equal to what is it a fraction a positive integer a negative integer or none of these. Definitely it's not going to be a negative integer because the numbers are all positive. So definitely not these. Now 2 raised to half what can we do in such a case is that we convert 4 as a power of 2. So we can write it as into 2 square the whole raised to 3 by 4. And then we write this as 2 raised to half into 2 raised to 2 into 3 by 4. So this becomes 3 by 2. So it's ultimately 2 raised to half into 2 raised to 3 by 2. Now we use the first law. Common base, different indices and we are multiplying. So you're using the rule x raised to a into x raised to b is x raised to a plus b. So that makes it 2 raised to 4 by 2, which is 2 square. Obviously, it's 2 raised to 2, which is 4. So among these, it's a positive integer. It's definitely not a fraction. It's a positive integer. But you come to know only after you get the indices in the form of fractions and after adding the same thing if it had you had got it as 7 by 2, it would be a positive index. So it won't be an integer. So the answer is it's 4. Hence, it's a positive integer. And yes, it is a positive integer. Okay, now this seems a little dicey, but not really so. It's 81, the 81 x raised to 4 divided by y raised to minus 8, the whole raised to 1 by 4. So let us actually put it in the form of a simple fraction. So it's 81 x raised to 4 upon y raised to minus 8 the whole raised to 1 by 4. Now again we are using the rule x upon a the whole raised to m is x raised to m upon a raised to m. We can use that. So we can write this as 81 x raised to 4 the whole raised to 1 by 4 upon y raised to minus 8 the whole raised to 1 by 4. And then 
we are going to use two rules here. One is power of power rules or distribution of. So it's going to be 81 the whole raised to 1 by 4. So here into x raised to 4 the whole raised to 1 by 4. So what rule have we used here? Yes, we have used the rule different basis common index. So we distribute the index. So it is a into b the whole raised to m is a raised to m into b raised to m. And denominator, of course, we are going to use the power of power rule, y raised to minus 8 into 1 by 4. Now, this is going to turn out to be 81 raised to 1 by 4, which is actually 3 raised to 4. The same way as I told you the Calci, if you are not very sure about what 81 could be, check with 3, 3 into 3 into 3 into 3 gives this. 1 by 4 into x raised to 4 into 1 by 4. This will become y raised to minus 2. So this will become 3 raised to 4 into 1 by 4, which is 3 into x upon y raised to minus 2. So this eventually becomes 3x upon y raised to minus 2. Now, when you have 3x upon y raised to minus 2, we can write this as 3x upon 1 upon y squared. Now, we are doing this in detail just to consolidate. See, what are the various rules we are using here? We use x into y, the whole raised to m distribution, power of power rules. Here, you are using the rule that a raised to minus b is 1 upon a raised to b. This can be now written as 3x into y squared. So you are dividing one number by another number which is the same as multiplying the first number by the reciprocal of the denominator. So you get 3xy squared. So the answer for this is 3xy squared. Now among these we don't have this. So apparently the answer is none of these. Yes we have. So the answer was 3xy squared. Okay. Now here what do we have? We are using the first rule x raised to a minus b into x raised to b minus c into x raised to c minus c. So we're using the rule, we're extending it to more than two numbers. We write the common base and we add up all the indices. When you add up all the indices, what we get is x raised to 0. Now, what is an x raised to 0? Remember, any number raised to 0 is 1. So x raised to 0 is 1. So among these, 1 is the answer. You just had to write the common base, add up all the indices, you end up getting 0. So the answer is 1. And yes, it does tally with what we have with us. <clears throat> now let's see further. Among these, which is not absurd. Now let's check these, each of these. The true option among these is what? x raised to 2 by 3 is the same as what? Now if you see x raised to 2 by 3 is going, is, is going to be x square the whole raised to 1 by 3. It is going to be x square the whole. We are splitting up the whole thing, remember, because 2 by 3 can be written as 2 into 1 by 3. So one step ahead of this Maybe you could have written as x raised to 2 into 1 by 3. So this is the same as x squared the whole raised to 1 by 3. Now x squared is going to remain as it is. Now this is the same as telling cube root of x squared. So it's going to be cube root of x squared. But let's also verify these ones whether it will be. No, this is x raised to 2 by 3. This is going to be this one is going to be x raised to 3 by 2 because it's square root of x cube and <coughs> x raised to 2 by 3 is it greater than x square so this one what do we have here this is nothing but x raised to 2 by 3 the same as we have so definitely x raised to 2 by 3 and these are equal both these are equal so this is wrong this is wrong so the correct option is x raised to 2 by 3 is the same as cube root of x square. So whatever is in the denominator becomes the root and whatever is in the numerator becomes the power.
So since it is x raised to 2 by 3, it is the same as x square, the whole raised to 1 by 3, which is cube root of x square. So the correct answer is cube root of x square. And yes, we do have that as the right answer. So thus, we did a few examples, simple examples as to how to tackle the concept of the positive indices, fractional indices, etc. Now, we shall move over later on. After this, we move over to the real application of these rules in slightly more complex problems.